Sister Claire Condon. I'm the congregation, current congregational leader of the Sisters of the Good Samaritan of the Order of St. Benedict. We're a, a Catholic uh, religious order of nuns. We were founded in 1857 here in Sydney, Australia, particularly to care for women and children uh, who were homeless at that time in a, in a colonised country. And so um, we've continued that work now for 158 years. I don't personally uh, work with them. I'm the congregational leader. Other sisters work on the ground with women, but um, women that have been sleeping in cars for evening uh, over days because they've had to run away from home uh, with their young children. At the inn in Melbourne, they've had babies just days old uh, with their mother staying because they can't go home uh, or they're driven away from home. So that's the kind of situation that we have here in our country, which is a, a wealthy country, um, but we have, we have our share of, of problems. Australia's probably a fairly male-dominated society in, in many respects. Our, our sisters work with um, refugees and asylum seekers that have come to our country. Our, our government and, and our opposition in government have a rather draconian policy at present, which is against international human rights um, legislation and international law. When you look at children who are in detention uh, for long periods of time, whereas the United Nations Convention on the Human Rights of Children regard and rightly that uh, detention should be a last resort for children. But we've, in this country, we've got children and women and families uh, in, in detention for long term. And so our sisters visit the detention centres. Uh, and we also, some of the sisters work with uh, refugees and asylum seekers who have made it into the community and who are not able, they're not given the, uh, the right to work. And so um, they need a lot of support in terms of language, in terms of just basic living requirements. So we have, we have about 20 sisters engaged across the country working with refugees and asylum seekers, and we advocate on their behalf as well. Yes, uh, well, we try and work in partnership. We have some sisters in the more remote areas of Australia, in the, in the central desert area, or on uh, Palm Island in North Queensland, or in parts of Western Australia. And, and there our aim is to work alongside um, our Indigenous brothers and sisters uh, to help work with them so that uh, they're empowered. You know, 200 years ago they were dispossessed of their lands and their culture, um, significantly disadvantaged, and that whole history uh, is deep within them. There's a, a process in Australia at the moment to try and recognise Indigenous people within our national constitution. They have no real recognition. And so there's a debate going up in our country called Recognise at the moment to, uh, to recognise Indigenous people as the first people of our nation. Um, I think that is a human, basic human right uh, for them and... Uh, you know, we, we want to work with them and beside them, and um, they're our brothers and sisters. Many in the Australian community are working with um, refugees and asylum seekers. In particular, I think women religious orders in Australia are working together to, uh, to uh, assist and support um, refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, and have done so for many, many years. Australia has been a country that has um, welcomed over 800,000 refugees since the Second World War, and we're a vast country. Um, we could support many more people, but we have this politics of fear uh, that um, the policy has been stop the boats, turn the boats back. And so it's built up this... Um, fear within our country rather than having a generous welcome. And 
you know, we follow the Christian parable of the Good Samaritan, and it's actually the stranger in that story that brings um, uh, that brings healing and wholeness to the person by the wayside. So I think we gain as much from the people we serve as they do from us. We probably gain more. We, we, we lobby government. Um, government's not uh, terribly generous with, uh, with financial support for whether it's domestic violence or refugees and asylum seekers. So uh, we have a foundation uh, that supports our sisters and that's local people. It's often people who've been educated by us who, who provide financial support. And we work in partnership with other agencies, not for, not, not for um, non-government organisations here in Australia. Um, more than we would with government. But we advocate, we write letters, um, we seek to support those who, who need our support. I, I don't see an, any increase. Um, I think we have a, a political uh, arena currently in Australia that's geared to, uh, so that's self-serving, um, that's individualistic and that... Um, is not geared to to assisting those who most need help in society. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do in our country around social justice, around human rights, and uh, particularly working with with the people of the Pacific. We have sisters now in in the country of Kiribati, which is um, a group of coral atolls, islands in the Pacific. Um, it's materially extremely poor, but it's a country with a with um, great family sense, even though it, it also suffers from significant domestic violence. And uh, so as Australia's withdrawn uh, its significant amount of its aid, overseas aid in recent years, and that's of great concern. Uh, we were a generous country in terms of our neighbours in the Pacific, and uh, that seems to have been diminished whenever there's uh, any kind of financial crisis. They seem to be the people where uh, money's withdrawn very quickly. Well, I think it's part of our, congrega our, our whole um, congregation as a group of sisters. Our focus is on uh, being neighbour to those in most need and that's been part of our history since 1857. So... We've had 158 years of it, and although our sisters, many of them are ageing, they're still out there be, trying to be neighbour to, to those most in need. Yes, but yes, I joined the sisters oh, some 50 years ago, and uh, it's my life, and it's the life of all our sisters. We live, we live a communal life, we live in community, we pray together, and we plan our, our ministries and our life together. Yeah, I think it's more a mutual uh, approach to life. Uh, we try and work with partners. So um, in, in working with others, uh, they're working with us as well. And I think it's a, a mutual um, development of collaboration together, that it's not a top-down kind of we do the work and they get better, but it's more, um, yeah, becoming brothers and sisters together and working closely together for the betterment of all of us. Oh, they make me much more aware of the needs of other people. Um, I'm le much less um, selfish or self-centred. Um, they teach me that we don't need a lot of the material resources that we think we need. Um, that we can rely on uh, respect and mutuality uh, with one another and we're a much better people for that uh, reduction in, in a competitive nature. Uh, yes, I think um, the people I've got to know over the years uh, have brought me great, great richness and great blessings. <laughs> the habits. We haven't worn a habit for about 30 years and most most religious sisters, most nuns in Australia don't. Uh, 
we are, see, see ourselves as being one with, with ordinary people and um, we don't need to to wear any particular dress to to be recognised and to work with people. We're just one with the people. Thank you.